Yeah. I didn't know that. So, like I said, it's it's complicated yeah. because there's multiple things going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, like it's not just like I said. It's not just tall, short, short black, yeah. white. You know, it's so it's. There's some room for some give and some take. Yeah. What about the female pattern bias? Because I've seen a lot of bias females. Um, I think there is a gene. Well, I don't know. I don't know about female pattern baldness. It tells me it's not on. It's not going to be on the Y chromosome, right? Because females have it too. So it's got to be something um, either on an autosomal trait or maybe an X-linked trait. It's probably an X-linked trait, just like colorblind, which is why you see more males affected. Balance but it has multiple, balance. again, there's multiple genes going on, so it gets kind of messy. I've never seen a white bald girl. I don't see black bald girls. Oh, I've seen white bald. Do you see white bald mm -hmm. girls? They're, they're, they're all older. Yeah, they're older, but yeah, I mean, I've even young. young? Well, <laughs> it definitely affects... <laughs> It's definitely going to affect the males more than the females, which makes me think there's at least one gene, maybe, that's involved on the X chromosome. So that's the X one. I don't want to tell you it's an X link because I'm not 100% sure. It's polygenic. All you need to know, multiple genes. So there is a possibility that one of those genes could be on the X chromosome, which is why you see it more in males. But that's just kind of an educated guess. I can be told. You can Google it. All right. Is the polydactyl, is that a dominant, like, the dwarfism? I think... We have a friend, their family, every one of their is. child has... I think it is, yeah. The polydactyly where you have extra, yeah, finger extra fingers. Show. Actually, it is, because um, in um, various different um, <laughs> Quaker populations, you know, like pilgrims and stuff like that, because they, they interbreed with one another, they're just constantly recycling and reshuffling those traits, so a lot of them have extra fingers, and it hits every single generation. So, yeah, I think it is a... I mean, think we knew it was... I, we didn't ever get personal, but we knew it was genetic, but for each of their children, it would be like the dwarf. Exactly, yeah. You only need one copy to get it, so that's why you see lots of people. It affects lots of people. All right, so skin color. Here we are. So again, you have multiple different genes contributing to the skin color phenotype. In this case, you're going to have three different genes, genes A, B, and C, but each one's going to have two different alleles. So you have six different alleles contributing to a phenotype. And again, it's a matter of dosage. So people on the light end of the scale, they're not going to have any of those you know, pigment genes on, whereas at the other end, Darker people are going to have more pigment genes, and then everybody else is going to fall somewhere in between. And so each one of these is, again, based on multiple genes. So in this case, really, really, really light people are going to be all homozygous recessive, whereas really, really, really dark people are going to be all homozygous dominant. And then the heterozygotes and very other, various other different combinations are going to be present. And so... Because this has an additive effect, you can have multiple different genotypes. Something funny over there? Am I, am I cracking y'all up? You said, damn, what's the word here, baby? Black is beautiful. That's what my mom told me. <laughs> All right. So if you have an individual, if you have an individual that's heterozygous, for all three genes, they're going to have three of those pigments present. That person is going to be the exact same color as someone with this genotype because you have three of those pigments. Just like that would be the exact same as that. So it's a dosage factor. So if you have three of the dominant alleles, you're going to have three of those color pigments. If you have four of those dominant alleles, you're going to have four color pigments. So you're going to be dark. So it doesn't matter which genes and which alleles are expressed. It's a dosage thing. So the more pigment genes you have, the darker you're going to be. The less you have, the less dark you're going to be. Yeah? The more darker you are, the more pigments you have, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you can see that's what these little circles are representing, those six different alleles. 
And if you get a dominant allele like a capital A or capital B, that's one of those pigment colors. So if you don't, then that's one of those non-pigment. So the more pigment you have, the more darker you're going to be. Yeah. Less. <laughs> Whatever. Go ahead. Y'all know what I'm saying. What about the blue? Like well, different colors. I mean, that's still what you mean, like right. Indians. You know, a lot of that's what. I mean, like maybe is it a sunlight thing? Sunlight is totally effective because the closer you are to the sun, so people closer to the equator, which is closest to the sun, they're gonna have more. They're gonna have darker skin because the sun. I mean, like this side of my skin is lighter than this side of my skin. Oh, that's just exposure to sun and other stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, sunlight and your place on the globe does affect. So people at the North Pole and Antarctica, they're not very dark because they don't get a lot of sunshine. And sunshine is required to make vitamin D. And vitamin D helps give pigment to your skin. Sure. So if you're closer to the sun, you're going to get more vitamin D, which means you're going to be darker. So would say someone like in my instance, if I go to the equator, and that yeah. would just be because that would just be because of environment that I would Yeah, but you would, I mean, it's not like you walk oh, the equator and you instantly turn them <laughs> on dark. I'm just saying, yeah. No, it is. It is an environmental thing. Like a lot of these phenotypes, they have an environmental influence. Would that change for what I pass on? Um, it depends on the. I mean, everything is a combination of nature and nurture, in my opinion. You can't have totally, totally nature and totally, totally nurture. It's a combination of both. So that goes for any of these traits. You know. Okay. Oh, we finished. Good. All right.